Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. Uh, it's uh, another day where I uh, was just uh, at home doing my whatever I do, and uh, I got a text message from uh, one of my ads on Craigslist about you know, uh, hey, if you throw away your snowblower or your lawnmower, or your lawn tractor, text me, give me a picture, I'll come by and pick it up. Sure enough, I got one of those calls uh, last night, and the guy says that he has a uh, Craftsman 2. You know, it looks like the LTV-10. You know, old Craftsman, like uh, early 80s or something like that. Uh, it's got a vertical pipe coming out of the exhaust. It's kind of cool. Uh, he also has a snowplow. I always wanted a snowplow. Always. Anyway, so he lives in Continue Mother for Town, one mile. Long Island, and uh, it's about 30 minutes away from my house. I'm nearly there. So, a uh, snowplow, tractor, it's got the mower deck on it, and uh, this is what the ad looked like. slide it in here. Yeah, you know, I can slide it in. Here. First? Yeah. Uh, I'm just thinking about the most convenient way to do it. Maybe if I if we both lift it up and put it sideways. Right? You guys, I'm back. Wait till you see what I got, baby. Let me tell you. A lot of stuff. Uh, I gotta clear up my garage first. So today I got a new package. A new sponsor from uh, Tightreach Pro. Tightreach Pro is a company that makes these ingenious new... Um, for the DIY guy, you know, or, you know, the professional mechanic. I got a quarter inch tight reach extension and a three eighths tight reach extension wrench. He also sent me a t-shirt and a couple of stickers. I'm gonna put you on the mowers and blowers wall of fame. 
So I just took uh, the um, quarter inch one out of the package. It's very lightweight. I don't know if it's aluminum or something, but it's not plastic. It's comes with the uh, quarter inch adapter that goes in here. And then you get your quarter inch uh, ratchet. Basically in those tight spots where you just can't get to. Look at that. Cool. It's an ingenious idea, you know. I don't know why any nobody has thought about this over the years, you know. You know, where you just can't reach, you know, where your hands are just too big to reach into areas. This is fantastic. Here's the 3 8 one. Comes with three different adapters here. You just put your 3 8 ratchet on here. And look at that. Now also, it comes with this other one here, which I think this goes to a one-half adapter. And over here, since I use my impact so often, you can put your 3 8 impact adapter for your impact wrench. With the uh, impact adapter, you can just put your standard 3 8 impact on there. Man, I got to tell you, um, I could have used this a few projects ago because uh, knuckle busters, man. This would have saved me a lot of carnage had I got this a uh, few projects ago, you know? This is fantastic. Um, thank you guys very much, over uh, the guys over at uh, Tight Reach. Really appreciate it. Uh, you bet your butt I'm going to be using uh, these items over here on my next project. Probably my uh, GT6000 project, huh? When I'm going to be um, installing an engine. Here, I'll show you. That Vanguard 16 horsepower horizontal shaft uh, engine is going to go on to my GT6000. And uh, you bet your butt, uh, getting your hand underneath to put those... Uh, bolts in you know the engine mounting bolts gonna be a tough one you know I always scratch up the knuckles that way but uh, appreciate very much uh, the items here from tight reach you guys can go find uh, these tools over at tightreach.com go check them out on social media as well Ah, oh, the mowers and blowers. Wall of Fame. Thanks again to the boys at Tight Reach for the two extension wrenches. Go check them out at tightreach.com. As long as it doesn't impede where you're putting this at, you can store the other three adapters on the other holes. You can have your impact on this side. You can have your three eighths on this side. And your half inch over here. They have um, other sets too that are much bigger for uh, mechanic shops and everything. You know, the half inch ones and the heavy du super heavy duty ones. But this will this will do for the um, for the do-it-yourselfer guy, you know, like me, you know, in your garage. I'm definitely going to use these tools in the upcoming videos. I always thought the gas tank that I put in here, the gravity-fed one, looked hinky. So I put uh, this one on. Pete Lombardi gave me this gas tank, and I uh, fabricated a bracket on there. So now it looks a lot more stocked than this one. I had that one sitting on top there. It just looked, uh, looked jigged, do you know what I mean? So this looks a lot better. Cleaned it out. I'm going to put some gas in it and see if uh, this John Deere will fire up. As far as I remember, there's nothing wrong with this thing.
perfect. Here we go, first startup of the year. Smooth man. My black beauty out too. Gonna blow that off. Crap everywhere.
this guy's snowplow. I always wanted a snowplow. This one's in excellent condition, man. Trailer. Guy had it uh, painted like uh, U.S. Marine Corps. There's the plow. Craftsman. Here's the tractor. He uh, painted it himself. He said he sanded it down, painted the camouflage. Dude was a Marine. You guys saw that video. Dude was huge, man. Look at that uh, vertical exhaust pipe. I've had a couple of these. This looks just like the one that I stripped the uh, 16 horsepower opposed twin out of. Also comes with the matching trailer. Is that badass or what guys? Is that cool? That's pretty cool, right? And I got it for free! That's right, free. 100% free. Came with the wheel weights too. All right, guys, here's the moment. Opposed twin or flathead? I bet you it's like a, I bet you it's a 12.5 Briggs. I have no idea, okay? Oh, 12. You know, the guy said um, that this thing ran two years ago and that there's nothing wrong with it. He said it has the original battery that he um, when he, he bought this whole tractor, it came with it, it was new. So hopefully the battery still works. But this engine's pretty old. I hope it doesn't have that um, one-piece flow jet carburetor. I hate those. I don't know. You think this thing would uh, take much to get it going? Because you gotta rebeat the tires in the front. They're off the bead in the front and the back. <laughs> Pretty cool though, man. It's a good score, huh? Free! Did I mention it was free? That's right, I didn't mention it was free. It is missing the key though. That's alright. I got lots of keys. I think it's that one. And it is. So I just put the uh trailer, the plow away, and the weights. And the first thing I got to do is got to be able to roll this thing around if I need to, right? So uh, three of the tires are off the bead. The, both fronts, left rear, but the one on the right is okay. So you know how you get it on the bead, right? As you can see, it's off the bead. Right, Boba? Yeah, it's uh, only fitting that I use my camouflage uh, ratchet straps. Okay. So you basically just wrap it around the wheel, right? And you tighten it. As you tighten it, the two walls, the back and the front walls, push outward and touch the rim. And uh, with my compressor back here in the front, hopefully I'll be able to pump this baby up. Front seem to be a little bit difficult because they're they're narrow tires. And uh, looks like that tread is very um, rough, not rough, but uh, hard, you know what I mean? So it might be difficult to push outward. 
but we'll we'll check it out. Guys, isn't this really cool? Very military, man. I might keep this. No, I'm not gonna keep it. LOL. So I tightened it up, right? And I was about to pump it up. I noticed, man, what happened to the valve stem? Guess what? It has tubes in it, duh. I'm just gonna fish that valve back on and uh, stick it through the hole and see if I could uh, pump it up without the ratchet straps. Well, would you look at that? Took the valve stem out, just pumped it up. The uh, tube seems to be good inside. Nice. So the that one over there is good. So I'm gonna jack up the front and uh, well, you know what? Maybe that has a tube in it. I'll see. Yo, badass. Just put air in it. Holds air. Nice. All right, so this one for sure does not have a tube in it. You can see through it on the other side. As you can see, there's a valve stem. So this I definitely have to put the ratchet strap on. All right, so I got it on here. Give it a try. Success, success, I tell you, success. Put you guys on a tripod and see if this thing rolls freely. Yes, it does. Look at that. That's fantastic. Let's check the Earl. Let's see how the Earl looks. It's a little past the ad line, and it's black, but you know what? Not the worst I've ever seen. It's enough to crank it, I think. Does it have gasage? It does have gas. Mm, funky. Hey guys, you know what? I think this is a Tecumseh engine. I've never had a Tecumseh riding mower engine before. Cool. First one. First time for everything. I'm going to put the uh, battery charger on it. I was just about to put the thing on and, uh, well, that's not going to work. Let's so spit on it. Well, that's not going to work. I'm going to have to fix that. I just took some pliers and just uh, shoved that thing back in there. I'm going to try to crimp it, but it looks pretty tight. These big vice grips wrenches. Oh, That's good leverage, man. I think that did it. Just for shits and giggles, let's put a multimeter on and just see how much voltage we got. Whoa, 11.1 .1 volts. Hey, that's not bad. I'm going to hook up the battery to it. Uh, charger, sorry. The charger. I've got to put the battery on. The charger. We'll plug it in, give it some juice, put it on the uh, start thing, and see if it uh, cranks. How about that? Let's see if it cranks. Which works, but it's seized. It won't turn. Problem is, you uh, you can't exactly use your hands to manually turn it because um, 
these are riveted on there, you have to take the uh, cowling off just to get access to the flywheel, which is a pain. So I guess I'm going to take the hood off. So it was just uh, <clears throat> one nut here, three nuts on the inside of the front part. Some washers, like Tara would say. Not washers, but washers. I just got a package from the mail woman. This, I'm thinking, is the um, engine mounting plate for the GT6000. I spent, uh, I think, 20, 20, 20, 20, 30 bucks. And I know it cost this guy like. 20 bucks to send it to me. This thing's heavy and it's a big box. Here's the uh, engine mounting plate for the GT6000. I needed this because I didn't want to fabricate one. And being it only 30 bucks, you know, that's strong, original, OEM, you know what I mean? Might as well just pay for it. Even though you guys know I don't like to pay for it. So that's it. That's what the uh, the carburetor looks like. Um, I'm pulling on this uh, mower deck belt here. Engine seized. I have to give it some help. So I have a feeling it's not going to be as easy as I thought to uh, get this thing going. What I'm going to have to do is uh, remove the air box, remove the uh, engine cover, just so I could try to uh, turn the flywheel so that when that battery is well charged the starter will be able to move freely and turn the flywheel and that's the only way we're going to try to get this thing started if it's seized up like this there's no way that uh, starter is going to be able to turn the flywheel so uh, I'm going to have to get my penetrating oil ready and uh, take this thing apart I'm thinking rat's nest. Actually, look at that filter. That's not bad. It's just a pre-filter. It's filled with this stuff. It's not bad. It's looking promising. But look at this fur here. See? Yuck. There's two long studs that hold the air filter base in place. And it's a flathead. Can you believe that? Who uses flatheads anymore? A. I I wonder how old this is. You know, gasket looks new. Everything's coming off really easily. There's a better look at it from over there. Check this out. The throttle is very smooth and it works. Look at that. Choke closes, it's very top. The throttle moves as it should, very easily.
opportunity now to use uh, my new tight reach extension wrench because I didn't want to take this uh, panel off because I don't really need to <laughs> because I have a tight reach, right? My knuckles are all scratched up from trying to get there and not to mention I have to bend down and stuff. So basically, look at that. Taking this engine cover bolt off, no problem. And I don't have to bend or reach down totally for it. Two. I think that did it. I think I can now take the uh, top cover off. Guess not. Yes, I can. Ugh. How about that? Rat's nest. I'm so surprised. Grossage. So normally I would uh, get my blower out, my leaf blower, and blow that stuff out, but uh, my dog's here, so I'll have to do that later. But uh, let's see if I could try to turn that flywheel by hand. I'm going to get a socket for that and a breaker bar. I got a 15 16 socket and a breaker bar. Well, you know what I'm doing? I'm tightening the bolt. That's what I'm doing. I'm taking the, the bolts moving, but I'm afraid to go any further there because I don't want to snap it and then I'm screwed, you know what I'm saying? Saying? Yeah, that's a tough one for me. And I don't want to take like a screwdriver and put it between these metal fins because they'll break. I mean, they are metal fins. Yeah, I'm really tightening this up. The amount of leverage you have with the breaker bar you could easily strip that bolt. Man, that's rough. See, usually you'd be able to turn that that way, you know? I gotta think about this. Well, I can't move that flywheel, man. I think maybe I have to take the spark plug out, shoot some PB blaster into the cylinder. Although it doesn't appear to, you know, have that issue where, you know, it's locked up and stuff. Every, all the signs that I see are that it's decent, you know, that it's it's decent. And that there's no water, you know what I'm saying, in here. Well, the, the Earl was, you know, relatively good. I don't see any water or any discoloration to it, so. Maybe I have to disconnect the... Uh, you know, the belts, the belts might be the reason. If I take the belts off, maybe it'll loosen up. But you know what? I was I was banging that flywheel with uh, a chisel. I was doing one of these jammies, you know? Put it in the hard part right here. Right? And, I'm, and I'm banging it like this, you know? It's not even budging. Even budging. I don't want to hit those fins because it'll be it'll be dunsky for sure. So 
It's moving a little. I should have marked it so I know if it moved a little. Not even budging. Not even a little. gonna have to take the hood off which means I have to take this left pan this right panel off and the hood so I can reach the spark plug I'm gonna have to get that uh, nut out over there I'm gonna use my tight reach to get that just to show you how it works telling you man, you guys should have invented this thing a long time ago. This is sweet. Awesome. Stuff really works man. Thanks a lot guys that uh, tight reach. I really appreciate it. If you guys want your own set, make sure you go to tightreach.com and get yours. Alright, now I can get to the spark plug. My uh, battery's dying, so I'm just gonna cut it here. I'm gonna take the spark plug out and shoot PB Blaster in there and let it soak overnight. I'll continue this tomorrow. So I just sprayed what seemed like a ton of liquid wrench penetrating oil into the spark plug hole. It uh, didn't seem like it was even ever gonna stop filling up, you know what I mean? It never filled up. So uh, I don't know what the story is with that. So I'll let that soak and hopefully this penetrating oil will lubricate the pistons. Maybe the piston is seized in there, in the uh, cylinder wall. But uh, I tell you what, I moved the uh, tractor back into the garage, right? And this was underneath the tractor. Doesn't this look like engine block wall? Oh. It's not oily or nothing, but this definitely looks like messed up engine, you know? But I inspected it. I looked everywhere. I can't 
I can't seem to find any part of the engine that has a hole in it, you know? Maybe underneath or something? I don't know. It doesn't make any sense though, because it's not dripping any oil anywhere. And I checked the oil and it's, uh, you know, up to the add part, so there's oil in there. I don't know where that's from. So that penetrating oil really helps, I mean, almost instantly. I just uh, used the chisel and banged the other direction, check it out. Broke open, broke loose. Except it feels like when I get here, it, it sticks. You know what, guys? I have a feeling the connecting rod's busted. Well, maybe not. I'm going to take the spark plug out now. So, I've got some bad news. There's a screwdriver in the uh, spark plug hole. Right? It just spins freely. Doesn't move. And also, I put my finger over the hole and I spun it with the other hand and I feel absolutely nothing. No suction whatsoever. That connecting rod I believe is busted. And this whole engine's trashed. Oh man. Well, it's not like I paid any money for it, right? Hey, maybe I should take the engine from the LTV-10 and put it on here. This tractor's in much better shape. Now that it's uh, has broken free, battery's been charging for a while, I'm going to see if it cranks. It doesn't. That's weird. Kind of moved before. up enough. Well, at least we know the starter works. I'm pretty sure the uh, connecting rods are busted, guys. Anyway, that's it for today. I'm going to think about what I'm going to do with this thing. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Just one more thing. No way did this engine run. Check this out. doesn't even it doesn't even like touch you know what I'm saying I don't think that uh, I don't think this thing ever ran unless the flywheel was taken off it's been a couple of days since I put the fix a flat into the tire and it's holding up just fine just realized that I have uh, air pressure sensors in the tire and hopefully I didn't put enough to uh, damage it but uh, what's done is done but my tires fixed hey guys support my channel buy a sticker got the bumper sticker too thanks for watching guys see you guys next time on Rolls and Rollers follow my Instagram